with me, Sean, in the best office in the world, my 996. Hope you're good, hope you've had a, a great end to last year, and I hope you are enjoying 2020 so far. I know I am. So, what I wanted to do today was give you a little bit of an update as to what's been happening, because the last time I did anything regarding my 996 was just before I went away to Dubai, and if you remember, my clutch and flywheel went within two weeks of getting the car, which uh, you could say miffed me a little bit. However, every cloud has a silver lining. I've got a replacement clutch and an upgraded light and flywheel, single mass. Also at the same time, whilst the car was away with DW Performance, um, highly recommend them by the way. Kev is an absolute legend um, and I can't thank him enough for how willing he was to help me out. He, um, he also noticed that my IMS went to pop, so I had a replacement fitted. Now, a couple of people have asked me what the hell's an IMS, and I know that it's something that we, as 996 and Porsche fans, kind of have heard about a couple of times in the past. So what I'm going to be doing is another vlog, talking to Kev, explaining what the IMS is. I do apologise, I'm just trying to pay attention to speed bumps. I hate speed bumps. But there are ways of tackling them. Anyway, so what we are going to be doing at some point is talking about IMS, RMS, what they are, what causes things to go wrong. Generally, I want to give you facts rather than bullshit because there's a lot of bullshit um, wherever you look and I know people talk from experience but sometimes experience and stories can kind of change somewhat over time so we'll give you some hard facts if you will we're back on point had the RMS changed I picked that up on pre-purchase inspection by Porsche inspectors who are amazing and if you are in the south, I would highly recommend them. I say south, anything from like Milton Keynes down towards London sort of area, M40 catchment. They are brilliant. And uh, I'll give you a link to them when you consider buying your next Porsche. Anyway, so they checked out and said that the RMS was starting to weep a little bit. So I knew that was gonna be changed at some point, but I was gonna leave it until the clutch and flywheel needed sorting. And lo and behold, two weeks later, did need sorting, but that's fine. No biggie. It was good that I got it all sorted at the same time and also the IMS. Now, I'm happy to report that lightweight, cl lightweight flywheel, sorry, uh, which is a Saks item, is absolutely brilliant. Um, save for hill starts and trying to move the car just using clutch control and embarrassing you when you're trying to <laughs> bay park Sound. It sounds like a 
like a heat shield to me, which I've checked out and everything should be fine, but on the hard acceleration between 2.2 and 2.8 in fifth and sixth gear. Can you hear that? That's gonna get diagnosed soon. But do you know what? Rather than worrying about it, nothing seems to nothing seems to be too bad with regards to that, so it's fine. here in any other gear. A bit in fifth and a bit in fourth but hey look do you know what you could drive yourself crazy if you listen to sounds in your car constantly. Do you know what we love our cars and we hate to think speed bumps. We hate to think that something's going wrong with the car and you know we want to look after it. We all have mechanical sympathy well, the majority of us do but at the same time can't worry about stuff like that, it would probably make me not want to drive the car. And I'll be honest with you, I want to drive the car. It's gorgeous. So whilst it was a DW performance getting all these bits and pieces done, I ordered some Milstein coilovers.
say for trying out a track day later on this year and kind of covering myself for the future. And Bill Stein is kind of OE. Look, roof on their upgraded roof suspension on their Porsches, or their cars, sorry. They use Bill Stein gear, so if these guys use it, I'm more likely to use it. Don't get me wrong, you tell anyone you're thinking about buying Olins or, or Bill Stein, you know what people are going to say, get the Olins. And I know why, the build quality is immense. I've not heard anything negative about the Olins. Um, it looks so good as well, you'll probably remember um, Pete showcasing one of the Olins R&T struts to me and it just looks so good. It's such a shame you can't really see a suspension. But then again, I could say the same thing about the PSS 10s. They look wonderful. They really do look like they have an awful lot of purpose and the kit look wonderful. Special thanks goes out to Design 911 who supplied their struts for me. I went with the PSS 10s for three key reasons. One, Bill Stein, wicked brand. I've had B14s on a previous car. Um, I've run them in the past and they were brilliant. I literally, all I could do was wind the suspension down, wind the callovers down, but it felt OEM, the drive. So that had a positive effect on me. Number two, I didn't need all those 30 adjustments. It just felt like overkill. Um, and, and three, I, I had kind of trust and faith in PSS 10s. I know a lot of people uh, in the US swear by the PSS 9s and now the PSS 10s. And I've seen some great videos with people utilizing uh, PSS 10s uh, on their cars like Caymans and BMWs and whatnot. No faith in the brand. And I knew they'd do well by me. Now I don't need to change the spring rates or anything like that. This car is not going to be one of those. I am not chasing lap times. I'm not going for a car that I can kind of talk about in the pub and say, look how much money I've spent on shit that I won't ever use because I just want to be like more. For me, it truly is purely about making sure that I'm going to be happy and satisfied in this car for years to come.
injured specialist, you get on side with them and, you know, have a bit of trust and faith in them, in what they do. Again, I'm going to use that term due diligence, but you got to make sure you do. Do the research about these companies and businesses. There's an awful lot of specialists around. Make sure you get on well with them. Ah, speed bumps. Ah, you want to know a good way around speed bumps if your car's quite low? Make sure, if it's one of those speed bumps that's about the width of a car, that you have two wheels on the bump itself and two wheels on the flat surface. That way, you'll easily go over it. Number two, very important number two. Where are you going? You, you're in my road, mate, so you may as well go. Douchebags on the road. Number two, you don't knock your car out of geometry or anything like that. Is vitally important, otherwise, you're going to carry on going to visit center gravity a lot. To be fair, I don't mind. So, some little things of assistance for you. Now, the most important thing what's coming up with Ren 11? I'm glad you asked. So, by the time this comes out, you'll already be aware that we're holding our first cars and coffee in March over in Stagston in Bedfordshire at my right honourable home slice Tom's place which is called Boyd's of Bedford. It's basically a bike cafe stroke clothing stroke chill out area in Bedford and it's banging. Wicked views. We've got space for about 35 40 cars. I'm not looking for big, I'm just looking for the right cars and the right turnout with the right people. If you know what Ren 11's about, you know the Instagram, you know what I'm like, I'm fairly chilled and that's kind of the stuff I want to promote. I want nice relaxed people enjoying cool cars in a cool location. So that's flat sixes and flat whites over in sunny Stagston. Details of that are below. Also in February, by the time this comes out, I'll be getting ready to go to Dasher and Trefford in Miami, which is going to be banging, and not just that, seeing my friends Aaron and Mike from P Car Talk. Danny, Eddie, and Burn from Real Muscle Car Miami. Ed from Bold City Motorsport and also Alan Jaime from DRT itself and everyone else. But it's really cool that I have a number of friends that I've made through Porsches even though I'm in a completely different continent to them. But that's the cool thing about Porsches, it brings people together. I don't need to keep on telling you about that. Get fucking involved. That's what you need to do if you want to see what it's like and what life's like all about Porsches. So that's coming up. Now, I'll be going to loads of events this year. Goodwood's definitely going to be happening, so I'll see you there. I'm probably going to go on a weekday. Make sure if you do see me, say hello. I am probably going to be wearing a Ren 11 t-shirt by then. And if you haven't got yours, why haven't you? You're halfway there if you're a 911 owner to be part of Ren 11, or a Porsche owner, or a Porsche lover, a Porsche fan. All you have to do is go to the website, buy a t-shirt, 15 GBP, a bargain, so good. and because I'm going to be doing so many events and going so many places, there's going to be an awful lot more vlogs. I've got some plans and ideas for some interesting ones, so please make sure you like, share, subscribe the page so not just you but your friends can see what's coming and it's not going to be run of the mill this is another event this is a show i've got some thought-provoking questions to ask the porsche fan base now yeah i'm a 911 owner however are there better cars out there within the porsche stable to make the 911 look a bit sorry is it 
douchebag in a Volvo. That make the 911 a bit tame or not as good? Let's ask those questions. Let's find out for ourselves. I'm happy to have an imperfect car. I have an imperfect nose, so it's normal. So we're going to be doing some interesting vlogs based on that kind of stuff as well. And not just that, speaking to the people that make the Porsche family, how cool it is. So expect some really, really cool stuff coming along. And also more and more cars and coffee meets by myself. Anyway, that is the end of this update. Thank you so much for being you. Um, being a fan it means an awful lot to me that you take your time to not only talk to me on Instagram but also on here um, if you're not subscribed yet you should so click that subscription button because I don't want you to lose out on any of the content I'm going to be making this year we've got a website now quite a simple one www.ren11.com and lastly Don't forget, we're on Instagram, at Ren11. Also, on Facebook, search Ren11. Don't be a stranger. Make sure you comment. Say hello. You see me around, and let's be honest, I'm distinct with this beard and this nose. It's huge, and the glasses. So you can't miss me anywhere. Say hello to me. Come up to me. I love talking to people. The people who have spoken to me, people like Chet, you know, Richard. <laughs> Actually, I lose count. Way, you know, it means so much when you approach me. You know, I'm very humbled by the support you guys show me. And it's so important. I want to look after you guys. And the whole centre community is we talk, we communicate, we spend time together. So it's very important what you do. Anyway, that's me signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day. Whatever you're doing, most importantly, subscribe to the channel, buy the t-shirts, be part of this wonderful culture and, and family. Till next time, folks. Laters. And coming up on the next episode of Round 11, we visit the Autosport International Show at the NEC. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Ren11. Why haven't you clicked the button yet?